So now that we have Charles Darwin established, and we established his book, his publishing of On the Origin of Species in 1859, you might be asking, what is the big deal? Why is this guy going crazy over a man named Charles Darwin over a hundred years ago? What is the purpose of learning about all of this? Well, let me prove that to you right now, that this is going to be a critical part of understanding biology altogether. So, let's entitle the next flowchart, um, Charles Darwin, Mr. Chucky Darwin, 2. And let me prove to you what the beauty of his discovery really was all about. So, what did Charles Darwin state? At this point, you should just know that Charles Darwin stated the following. NS, which is natural selection, is the mechanism for evolution. He basically explained how evolution happens, and he says in two words, evolution happens through natural selection. Descent with modification happens through natural selection. How did he come up with this, and why did he come up with this, and what does this mean for you as a general biology student? Let's see. There were two major observations that Mr. Charles Darwin made. Two major observations. And out of these two major observations came what we would consider two major inferences, all of which were written down in his book in 1859 on the origin of species. Now remember, these major observations were based off of his journey on the Beagle, a five-year journey on the Beagle, and those inferences are based off of these observations. That's what the idea of an inference is. It's something based off of an observation. So let's get to it. What's the big deal of natural selection? Here we go. The first major observation was something that we see every single day and don't really appreciate, I think. The fact that the world is full of an incredible amount of variation. You cannot study evolution unless you understand that the world is full of variation in the sense that every individual, meaning every living thing in that situation, every individual has what Darwin would consider a unique combination, so I'll just write combo, of traits. And we know what traits are. We talked about traits in Mendelian genetics. Things that define an individual. Eye color, hair color, height, length, um, round versus wrinkled, smooth versus rough. All those traits that we've mentioned before are unique in the sense that the combination of them leads to a unique individual, a variation in species. From this, we can state the following. We can state the following that this variation, this uniqueness, causes every individual, so every individual, IND, to differ. Okay, we're all unique. I know it's cliche, but we literally are all unique because of variation. It causes every individual to differ in there, and this is what made Darwin critical, and this was what made Darwin revolutionary differ in there, he was the first person to state the two most important things about evolution. Survival, and when you survive, you will coincidingly reproduce. Survival and reproduction. S plus R is what I'll write this as from this point forward, S plus R. You need to, in order to evolve, always survive and reproduce. Survive and reproduce, survive and reproduce critical idea that Darwin came up with. The reason why there's a difference in all of us, the variation in all of us, is because there's a difference in our abilities to survive and reproduce. To survive and reproduce. Cool. That's what is variation. Variation is due to our differences, our unique combination of traits, which gives us differences in our abilities to survive and reproduce. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Now, Number two, what's the second observation he made? Second observation is known as overproduction. First man to state the following, but he actually needed some help. Remember how I said he read some books on his journey and you were thinking to yourself, why do I need to know that? This is sort of the reason why you need to understand this. 
This overproduction phenomenon was based off of a book he read by a man named Thomas Malthus. We're going to get to that in a later flowchart, but for right now, we're going to write that overproduction is the following. And this is a really good definition. Each species, SPP for species, has the capacity to produce, has the capacity, meaning the ability, let's say, to produce, and this is a state, this is a fact, to produce more more, more, more offspring, that means let's say more children, than the environment can support. Okay, then the ENV can support. And now you're asking yourself, okay, cool, why don't they? Why don't we have a complete lack of support from the environment if every species has the capacity to produce more offspring than the environment can possibly support? Well, the reason why and what we can understand this, the reasoning behind overproduction and the true reasoning behind variation is to now understand the inferences that Mr. Charles Darwin made. And those inferences are the following. Number one is something known as, and you have to know this, it's called differential reproductive success. So what do you think that means just by looking at the name? Differential reproductive success. Different success in terms of whether or not you reproduce. Some people will reproduce a lot, some will reproduce very little, and some will, will be in the middle. This is what we mean by differential reproductive success. But specifically, what makes Darwin critical is that he stated that the individual, remember the individual is just the organism, the living species that's in question, with what he called the most favorable, the most favorable. This is sort of looking like what Mr. Um, John Baptiste Lamarck was saying. Individual with most favorable combo of characteristics, which I'll just write as C-H-A-R, is the most likely, it's the most likely, and this seems obvious to you, but you've got to understand, Darwin was the first person to say this, most likely to do the two crucial things that every organism needs to do. What are they? Survive and reproduce. Do not forget that. This is what we mean by differential reproductive success. The, if you have the most favorable combination of characteristics, if you're the strongest, if you're the fastest, maybe you're the smartest even, you are the most likely to survive and for that reason, because you survive, you are coincidingly going to be the most likely to reproduce as well. There is a difference in terms of whether or not somebody re survives and somebody reproduces all based off of their combination of favorable or non-favorable characteristics. And lastly, we can state that the individual who is best adapted, so we'll say best adapted, that's the key word here. This is a good word to know. Best adapted individual, I-N-D, for an environment for an environment produces, what do you think? What is the goal of life? Best adapted individual for an environment produces most, what do you think? Offspring. There it is. There's the idea of overproduction and variation encompassed in differential reproductive success. A unique combination of traits, the most favorable combination, will lead to a difference and possibly a positive difference in survival and reproduction and also those who are the best in terms of their combination of traits, thus those who are the best in their adaptations and their adaptive abilities are the most likely to reproduce and thus have the most offspring. Crucial, beautiful way to explain differential reproductive success. And finally, the last major inference that we'll do, and I'll do it over here since I ran out of space there, it's a short one, is that there is an unequal, there is a truly unequal ability between species or not even between species, even within the species, unique ability unequal ability, sorry, to 
S plus R. What is that? Survive and reproduce. Survive and reproduce. What does this go along with? It goes along with variation and overproduction simply because what we can state is that the accumulation, because those who are best adapted, those who have the best combination of characteristics, their characteristics, their traits are going to accumulate because of what we say the accumulation of favorable the accumulation of favorable traits in populations, so POPs for populations, over generations. This is a key idea here. Remember, evolution in and of itself happens at this level. It happens in populations over many generations, over a long period of time. That's something we're going to establish a little bit later in Biology 1, but for right now, overarching idea behind both of these things. Variation and overproduction are two critical observations Darwin made and he stated lead to a difference in survival and reproduction and lead to the, this capacity of every species to produce more offspring than the environment can support. But why does that not happen? This doesn't happen, this overproduction, there's a, a capacity for it to happen, there's a chance that it happens, but because there's differential reproductive success, because there's an unequal ability to survive and reproduce, we know that only the people that are most favorable will survive and reproduce, and thus those people that are the most favorable will have the most offspring because they are the best adapted. That solves the overproduction problem, that tells us about variation, and thus because of this inference, we will have an accumulation of favorable traits. This all makes a great amount of sense. This is all something that you know of already. It's not something new to you. It's just presented in a way that Charles Darwin presented it, and thus it's critical for us to understand that natural selection is the mechanism for evolution. These are the observations. These are the inferences. Now we can actually talk about how natural selection plays a critical role in everything that we just stated.